Thanks for tuning in to Zounds Live. This is Justin, and I am here with a very special guest today. This is Matt Kaler, the Senior Director of Product Development. I got that right, right? Yeah, or Guitar Geek. Guitar Geek. Works. Guitar Geek works better, right? Uh, we are at Gibson, the Gibson Garage, though, so we're going to be uh, speaking with Matt here and kind of uh, picking your brain with uh, all things guitar and to talk about the Epiphone anniversary coming up here. Yeah, so. awesome. Yeah, man. Cool. So, so um, yeah, why don't you just... Uh, Tell us first about your history with Gibson so far. Yeah, so we're at Gibson almost eight years now, um, eight crazy years, <laughs> um, but uh, kind of been fortunate to, you know, especially be in, in the, the current regime at Gibson um, for the last four plus years. Okay. Um, they've really empowered the guitar geeks, and so uh, as a result of that, I've, I'm now heading up all the stringed instrument product development. Okay. And that's company and wide, right? Company wide. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, yeah, it's been incredible. It's my dream job. So I mean, Amazing. it's, I get to do just the coolest stuff every day. So I'm, I'm very, very thankful. Living the dream man. living the dream. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have the chat window pulled up over here too. So any of you guys tuning in out there, I have a question for Matt, uh, for any of us, uh, drop us a line in the chat and we'll get to it. The hard hitting questions. The hard hitting yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The real incriminating stuff, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're basically like a bona fide, like, you know, guitar geek, right? Like a, yep. you probably are one of the most knowledgeable people around here for historical. Um, yeah, I'd say I, certainly for, for Gibson, I would put myself in there, for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, just the whole guitar uh, history field I, I find super interesting just the cool. genesis of the electric guitar and the solid solid body electric guitar and all cool. that stuff I just love the history so yeah. not just Gibson's but just, not just Gibson just no all, yeah just all things but, but so many of the most important innovations started at Gibson so that's for sure. why I was always drawn to work for Gibson cool yeah. and when did you start here uh when yeah when yeah did you yeah uh 2015 Okay, yeah. cool. And so now when you're doing product development now, kind of what's it been like kind of jumping into that role? So. Yeah, it's uh, so when I started, I was a, a product specialist at a custom shop and Gibson Memphis. Um, and it was uh, awesome. Uh, you know, I got to, you know, I came in knowing a lot about vintage guitars and used Gibsons, but I didn't think I, you know, really understood what a factory environment was and mm -hmm. what a portfolio management system was. And, you know, I, d okay. I didn't understand yeah. that stuff. So in getting entrenched, especially in the production side of things, the factory side of things, that, mm -hmm. that was the biggest learning curve for me. And okay. you know, it's like, oh, okay, so yeah, that's more complexity. So that's going to take longer in production and, you know. The, all the, those nuances there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. What's been the hardest thing once you got into product development? Um, I think just keeping track of everything. We, we have okay. got a huge product portfolio, you know, and mm -hmm. so our, from, you know, where we enter the market, you know, with Epiphone, let's say the, the Epiphone, Les Paul, you know, uh, player packs all the way through the Murphy Lab custom shop, there's a lot of individual product SKUs in between there. So. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Actually, speaking of that, did you have a hand in the um, development and implementation of the Murphy Labs guitars a couple uh, of years ago? Yeah, I did. Um, it was, I got to give, you know, the credit to Tom Murphy and Cesar for in, like endorsing the, the idea. And it was a great idea. And we were kind of looking for the next new thing mm -hmm. in, in, in that, like getting them even more accurate. Okay. And so that's that's where Murphy Lab came in. And so once it was established that we would pursue this, then it was up to me to create the product portfolio. So cool. you know, what are the core Murphy Lab models? What are the levels of aging through made to measure, all that stuff? It's like so. right up your alley too, right? I'm sure oh, you yeah. have a lot to say well, about I, Yeah, <laughs> as, a, as an owner of a Murphy Lab, Les Paul, I mean, cool, I, I cool. love it. Yeah. Which one do you have? I have a 59. Yeah. Cool, cool. I, I picked my top and... Did the whole thing. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. Okay. It was awesome. Uh, so how has the rollout been of those guitars the past couple of years? Has it been yeah. more positive? Yeah, yeah. No, I think, uh, I mean, I hear it from our artists who, mm -hmm. who play Murphy Lab guitars. And the biggest benefit to me of Murphy Lab outside of the look of them is uh, the binding roll. So the, mm -hmm. the fingerboard is rolled just like you would like the natural wear of an, an old just guitar. It. Yeah, just playing wear. Yeah. And we don't do that on our normal guitars because you have to break that lacquer line. You know, All right. it be yeah. seen as a flaw, but on a Murphy Lab guitar, it's made to look like it's six years old. So, yeah. um, so to me, it provides uh, like a mo even more comfortable neck, cool uh, as well. So, 
Awesome. So besides that, though, um, you know, we got Epiphone here come reaching kind of 150th year anniversary soon, right? So kind of what's it like to have jumped into this company and be a part of something that's been, you know, a century and a half old? Yeah, no, the, I mean, I, I love history and I was a huge Epiphone fanatic before I ever joined Gibson. In fact, I, I had a, so I had a vintage guitar business mm -hmm. called Holy Grail Guitars and I would tell people, I still tell people that Epiphones were my specialty because there wasn't a whole lot of knowledge about the vintage Epiphones, especially the era where they were made side by side with Gibsons in Kalamazoo. Yeah, yeah. And so you could find them and people didn't really know what they were, what they were worth. And so I would, I would, you know, learn as much as I could about it and then try to find them, you know? Cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's uh, old vintage Epiphones is something that I'm not very knowledgeable about. So, so glad there's people like you out there that can yeah I mean, that and, stuff up. and once uh, once you're looking for old guitars or rare guitars and you know you still may not know what the fuss is all about so i can tell you like for epiphone i had always heard that their arch tops their 30s master built arch tops were cream of the crop you know amazing mm -hmm. instruments and then i got my first one and i was sold i was like oh my god this is like the loudest <laughs> instrument ever super lively super lively yeah. yeah i had a triumph and, and i know david rawlings has a uh, an olympic that he likes a lot, cool. but, but all kind of, they're all just amazing. So that was like my entry point. And then I found a late thirties, uh, flat top an FT 79, which that mod model designation eventually became the Texan, oh, yeah, okay. but it was a walnut back and sides, like square shoulder dreadnought. Cool. Um, Old walnut one. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was like my main acoustic guitar for the last however many years, 10 plus years. So. Still playing it? Not as much. No. <laughs> <laughs> more. Well, I wish I was more, but yeah. So, uh, in terms of kind of um, vintage production models that you guys do now, do you have any like favorites right now? Yeah, definitely. So I love that we're doing the frontiers. Uh, you know, just in terms of classic Americana design and pickguard mm -hmm. design, I love the frontiers. The casinos from USA might be my favorite. Uh, okay. Model that we're running at USA right now. Um, just super musical hollow bodies, like they're just yeah, so fun yeah. to play. And, um, and yeah, so because it's the 150th anniversary of Epiphone this year, we've got some cool tricks up our sleeve and some stuff that okay. we've never done, you know, before or since the forties, fifties and sixties that we're going to bring back. Huge. So, okay. Yeah. So we can conceivably look forward to some new, new products. Yeah. And I, designs. I, I can say that you will see some bat wing headstock things. I know people have been clamoring okay. for that for a while. Cool. Uh, and a brand new, uh, art shop, um, that's inspired by the originals, kind of a continuation of the, the previous master built range. Awesome. Um, uh, when's that rolling out? You have guys have uh, dates that all over this, this coming year. So I think you'll probably see the most saturation in the summertime. Okay. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff planned and, and it's definitely a celebration. Like this is uh, it's a big we deal. We want to don't just want to introduce, you know, long forgotten models or reintroduce them. Mm -hmm. We want to mm -hmm. tell the story of Epiphone and why, Epiphone matters. Yeah, so. now's a good time as any, right? You know, big yes. anniversary. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, I know that uh, when you were first starting with the company, you um, had to deal with the changeover from the Gibson Memphis uh, mm -hmm. location closing. Did that have a, like a hand in how you guys went forward with development uh, here in Nashville then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the Memphis facility, it was my second home. I split my weeks and spend half my time there. Were you living down there then? Um, half the week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird arrangement, but I grew to absolutely love everybody who worked at that factory. And, and Mike Volts is still one of my good friends cool. and he, he was so pivotal in developing all of that. And David Winters was the general manager at the time. So shout out to those guys. But, um, but yeah, so the facility itself though it wasn't maintained the best and it's mm. just kind of we had we dealt a bad hand with the facility so that was gotcha. one of the the other reasons that we decided to bring it all back to nashville aside from just wanting it all to be here in nashville yeah so, it's all in one place now right yeah so but yeah so i had to help manage like which of those products went to which factory so we you know we had the custom shop craftery we had the usa craftery take on Part of the range okay and we're still sorting through that because we were able to um or we did so many different models 
uh, in Memphis that we just can't do them all, you know, can't integrate them all, but we're, we're working on it. So I'd love to see ES 175s and yeah, you know, more, <laughs> more of those kind of guitars too. Yeah, I was going to ask if the dust kind of settled, so to speak, since that happened a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, we're, the good news is we're still seeing a tremendous amount of demand. So cool. for the current product line, it, the bad news is sometimes that means you have to wait longer before you refresh it because okay. you got to cycle through the demand and the orders, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, do we got a question coming up here? No, we just got heart emojis. All right, we had some love from people out there. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks nice. for thanks for chatting there. Um, so kind of once you actually became head of product development, was there sp uh, certain changes or enhancements that customers were always requesting that you have to parse through? Or um, Yeah, actually, even before that, so I was product manager at Custom Shop Next. And so it was um, kind of in, in, I think it was the... 2018 timeframe, I basically had the keys to say, these are the changes we're going to make to the historic reissues or to cool. the, the custom shop product range. So I had to create that portfolio. Is that kind of overwhelming at first? Um, no, I was, I, <laughs> man, I was primed and ready to go. So I already knew, and I'm a forum geek. Like I, so okay. I already knew where, where we wanted to go. We just had to figure out the supply chains to get there. So cool. Paper and oil capacitors and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the correct vintage taper potentiometers and, cool. Um, unpotted custom buckers and so there are all these changes that I wanted to make sonically you know outside of the aesthetics of the instrument mm -hmm. um, but then there's all the OCD stuff like getting the, the vintage <laughs> logo exactly correct and you know yeah, yeah that stuff matters man stuff matters. yeah the color of the silk screen and yeah so that, right. that's kind of um, where it helps to be OCD is it just gets them that much more accurate to the originals and For sure. you know I would say that especially some of the Murphy Lab stuff you could put side by side with the vintage equivalent and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Yeah. yeah, that's a badge of honor right there though. Yeah. So which one, uh, which model are you most proud of that you've had a hand in developing right now? Um, if any. Yeah. Uh, and it's like choosing your favorite of, child. Uh, yeah, right? exactly. I'm proud <laughs> of all of them. The, the ones that, that I think it was just a really, it was a labor of love, it was a long development timeline, but we it, the mission was get them perfect and mm -hmm. that would be the Carina Flying V and Explorer. So, oh, okay. So those models from Custom Shop, that was like my pet project. And it's really, there aren't that many of them out there, the originals. So you're- How many are there, do you know? There were, well, in 1958, 81 Flying Vs shipped and 19 Explorers shipped. So, <laughs> so and that's how many we actually uh, made of the first collector's edition limited cool. run. Cool, okay. So, nice little homage to that. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so those, that's like my, uh, probably my most proud project, but then also the Ted McCarty concept we, that we brought to life more recently, the Theodore, that that okay. was super cool, and that's one that I stumbled upon in the archives and didn't believe it at first, <laughs> and then I learned that um, my my friends at Gibson USA, Keith Medley, who's you know mastermind of of so many great USA models for the last thirty plus years, uh, he had seen it, he'd seen the the blueprint, he was like, oh yeah, yeah. no that's 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 the one, yeah, that's, that's Ted McCarty's. I'm like, <laughs> so we never did anything with this? He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no, did. They wanted to, but yeah. So, so we finally did, and awesome. uh, it was cool because I, I think we didn't know how it was going to do. We hoped that the story would would help sell it, but mm -hmm. they were gone. They were sold out like immediately. Nice, so, cool. So that's always a proud moment too. Is like to make to, to know that people are as into this stuff as we are. Yeah, he's got to find that middle ground, right? Yeah. Of like, is this worth the cost we're going to put is into this? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Yes, is the exactly. Common, common phrase. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so so basically like, let's say this building right now goes up in flames. What are you reaching for to save? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I've got, I have some personal guitars in my office, so it might be, it might one, of be those. one of those. One so, of yeah. those. Yeah. I have an Epiphone El Cayola, speaking of Epiphone, um, okay. that I... I brought into the office because it's it's kind of a weird guitar from the late 60s it's an El Cayola custom it's got two mini humbuckers it's a long scale 20 25 and a half inch scale okay. with a wide nut and a zero fret so it is really a strange okay. yes but it <laughs> it sounds incredible it sounds For amazing sure. so anyway that might be the one I would okay get. okay <laughs> So you're you're a musician yourself. I've, I checked out some of your music before this as oh, well, and thank you're, you. you're actually yeah. a great musician. So oh, thank you very um, much. I assume you probably are playing Epiphone or Gibson guitars on some of the stuff you guys record, right? Yeah. So well, I did my record uh, actually right before I came to Gibson. I recorded mm, it, okay. so it was like my final, you know, my my one <laughs> final thing is like, all right, I'm now is my time to record an album. I'm just gonna okay. get it done. So mm -hmm. I did it, um, and I used a 335 on. Most of it. I'd say 95% of it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So. I'm a 335 man myself yeah. too. Yeah, I've got one. 
Um, so yeah, uh, do you still make music now? Not as much. No, I, I think I'd, I'd like to get back into it, but I think, um, you know, not only know does is the job <laughs> does the job have more responsibility, but you know, you you I'm a married man, and you there's lots yeah. of outside the job yes, responsibilities. Yes. There's only too, so much so. brain space we got, man. There's yeah. only so much brain space. Just finished our basement, and it's a lot of like adult things that <laughs> 20s musician me would not even have considered. That so. Yep. It's a give and a take, but I definitely want to get back into it. For and sure. Maybe, you know, in 10 years, you'll find me in a cover band somewhere. <laughs> I hope so, man. I hope so. Yeah. So um, is kind of the Gibson Epiphone brand as a whole, are you guys trying to kind of hit any sort of um, marketing towards maybe younger audiences or anything like that? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we're aware of our key demographics, mm -hmm. which, you know, as, because our instruments are very difficult to create with the set necks and whatnot on the Gibson side, we're not automatically going to attract uh, the same entry level customers, but yeah. Epiphone is really the biggest opportunity to do that. And and the same for Gibson USA is like that's that's our entry point. If you want your first quality, great, you know, American made guitar, mm -hmm. you know, look no further than Gibson USA. But sure. on the Epiphone side, we recently uh, in the last year uh, released uh, the Power Players collection. Yeah, yeah. So Power it's Players. like you know, uh, reduced scale, smaller guitars that still play and feel like very professional grade instruments yeah, for sure. but definitely geared uh, more towards the younger uh, yeah. generation the, the for, you know beginning guitarists for sure and yeah, then I did we're a also demos trying to on those. oh okay yeah, yeah like, awesome. uh, maybe maybe six months ago or so i think yeah. five months ago and then we're also trying to bring back designs like this coronet here that you know it's a really funky awesome mm -hmm. cool design from Mighty. the late 50s early 60s and uh but it's finding new audiences now yeah. with you know punk and and uh you know, uh, grunge and indie bands. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, fun man. to see younger players kind of maybe not even knowing the history behind the model, but they gravitate towards the fact that it's unique and yeah. it's also accessible. It's like $449. Yeah, killer. So, yeah. So yeah, I know that kind of Gibson as a, as a brand, you know, usually leans on its heritage a lot, but is there any kind of new designs or anything like that that are in the works there? You guys are. Yeah. I think that's, that's the thing is like when you have this legacy brand, or brands like Gibson and Epiphone is that a lot of times we, it's just hard to innovate something new. And when we have launched something new, um, you know, it's the first response from the public is to criticize it or pan, yeah, to like, hate it. you know, yeah. to hate it. <laughs> but I've already seen, like, I've seen that. I saw the, the, when we did the modern double cut at custom shop, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, that, that was a model that I thought was really cool and fulfilled a very specific need. And it was, you know, criticized but it's old and so i know that there's an audience out there that we're not serving with certain designs and and i think even there are things that we could learn from models from the 1980s mm -hmm. um that you know from across the room you think it's really cool but you may not know the story you may not know what it is but we can revive the elements of that and tell that story and we can you know combine different models into yeah. something new so we're working on a few things like that new, new body styles but Cool. Always in that we want to have some nod to history because that's that is our it's DNA. The company. Yeah, yeah, that's the company yeah. right now. So it's like a legacy company at this point. Yeah. So we'll see. For that before. We were of course, do it. Ta talking earlier about uh, developing new tremolo systems, and that's oh, yeah? the same kind of thing. Is like, you know, when we venture off into this R and D, uh, we're we're trying to make something fresh and new, mm -hmm. but we want it to look Gibson or look Epiphone, like it's you know. That, that it, distinct kind it's of not thing. out of place yeah 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 so are you guys uh you guys gonna try to yeah push that i mean we got real? we probably have like 500 active r d projects right now so <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on but uh no yeah, but you may not it? yeah you may not realize that just but every uh every week we introduce a new product so it's there's definitely a lot, a lot. going on <laughs> yeah it's a lot could be, it could be a limited run it could be an artist model it could be okay. uh you know some new color ways that are being refreshed but mm -hmm. yeah a lot going on. What element of the new designs are you most excited about, though, personally? Um, I think just, yeah, reaching new audiences, for okay. sure. I mm -hmm. think that's the thing that, like, I, I would love to find our, our way and, you know, to cover a more broad space of genres and generations, cool. for sure. Cool, that, that's the goal. So are we, are we probably have to assume there's going to be, like, a 300th anniversary Epiphone then, right? So <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll wait I another so. 150 years yeah, yeah. and get a 300th anniversary Yeah, you let me model. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll pass that down the line there. Yeah. But anything else that you wanted to say here about the upcoming uh, Epiphone releases or anything while we got um, you? Yeah, I, I'll just say that I think, so we didn't really touch on, like, the whole history of Epiphone, but there, it's such a cool story. So even if you have the opportunity just to 
look at the Wikipedia page, or it, uh, you know, I would definitely suggest picking up the Walter Carter book, um, the Epiphone book that he did in uh, circa 2000. Okay. Um, like it's the most interesting story never told, or, or cool. I should say, n never really learned, because mm -hmm. most people I talk to don't, aren't aware of like the crazy history of Epiphone. And, yeah, myself yeah. included, you know. Yeah, so I mean, like it's well worth it, and uh, Epi Stathpoulo, which he that's who you know gave Epiphone its name. Uh, he passed away in 1943, but before he passed away, that was probably like the golden era of that time period. Okay. And then after he passed away, his brother Orphy took over, and that's who's, he's who sold the company to mm -hmm. Gibson through Ted McCarty. Gotcha. So okay. th there's this whole period of like, you know, the best years for Epiphone, followed by the dark times, and then re revived. It's it's like the classic epic tale of like, you know, <laughs> redemption. So The good yeah, versus evil right there. Cool. Every time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Well, unless there's any other people out there who have questions for Matt, uh, drop them in the chat now. Otherwise... Matt, really appreciate you uh, stopping in and, and uh, talking with us today. So, yeah, thank you so and, much. Yeah, yeah. obviously, everybody, you know, check out Zounds. you got a bunch of Epiphone and Gibson products there. And, you know, we're all excited to see kind of where it goes in the coming years and for the anniversary models. That Likewise. Come out. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, but appreciate awesome. it. Yeah, thanks so yeah, much thank for being much. here with us. Anytime. All right, guys. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for another Zounds Live episode uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.